Abhin Kuta is a photographer. She is also a politician. Aisha is a senior special assistant to the Kebi State Governor for New Media. Aisha recently took part in the primaries elections in your party under the All Progressives Congress yes. for aspiring for the House of Representatives seat. Data available to us, for instance, shows that the process was rigged against women. Do you agree? Well, I wouldn't say rigged, like specifically rigged. I would say we do have an institutional problem that causes a lot of, um, that doesn't give enough support for the women, you know. Um, with the way society is, we all know that women are lacking behind in most areas. And um, this particular election has gotten us to understand that we do have less women in the system for many reasons. Institutional, cultural, religious, there are many reasons behind it. And I think it's created an awakening for, um, for many people like me, for example, to thoroughly try to get involved in politics. Compared to his predecessor, President Mohammed Buhari has failed to provide as much opportunities for women in his cabinet as one would have expected or even as he had promised before now. Why are you still backing his candidacy for well, 2019? Well, I would say apart from the respect that he evokes from a lot of people and the genuine love that some people have for him, that level of respect ensures that there's implementation of many policies. I know just being able to implement the TSA accounts, for example, has created less avenues for corruption. You know, his anti-corruption campaign is one of the major things the party and Babu Buhari has held intact. The, the completion of infrastructure, we have so many dwindling projects. The regular, typical Nigerian politician would stop whatever project the predecessor does so that he can create his own for the limelight. But under Baba, that's a whole, totally different story. And I think that's one of the things Nigeria needs, continuity in everything that we do. You know, be it if a project is not as good as it's supposed to be, we should be able to sit down and fix what is bad about a project instead of just leaving it to waste resources that have already been implemented. And if people have taken money, they should be able to bring it back to complete the projects, which is one of the reasons I feel um, Baba is what we need at the moment. I think with a lot of the policies that have been signed, the, a lot of policies that are being created, Nigeria will not understand the value of Baba until later on, years to come. Because if we continue as we were going, I doubt Nigeria would be sp standing the way it is today. You are a member of the Presidential Campaign Council constituted by the First Lady and the wife of the President, Mrs. Aisha Buhari. Why is she staying away from the campaign? Who says she is? <laughs> That's the APC Women and Youth Presidential Campaign. I would first say that this is the first time in Nigerian history that we've had a women and youth campaign where the women and youth can come to talk about their own issues directly and also campaign on what we need and what we want. Um, I would say for me, trying to run under the APC, Mrs. Buhari is one of the major people that supported me. First things first, even when I was contemplating when the first posters came out for people who were supporting and trying to get me to run, I wasn't 100% sure, you know. And she was one of the people that allowed us to come to the villa to discuss with her and the women leaders. And one of the things she said was, if you have women like this who would normally not vie into politics, why are we saying there are no women? And this is what she's saying to the women leaders of the party to get them to start to think beyond just being women within a system that are not really contributing in that sense. And also she supported within my campaign, she supported 400 women under the Future Assured program. I can comfortably say that 400 women in my constituency have had seed money and are employing others, which for me has a major ripple effect. Even if that's just what I went to do, that's fine, and it came from Mrs. Buhari, so I doubt um, that statement is right, saying she's standing away. We, we all know that Mrs. Buhari has been a vocal activist, I would say, yes. in this government. In unprecedented circumstances, mm -hmm. she has been publicly saying to say things that are not going on right about this government. Yes. What kind of a woman is Aisha Buhari? 
Well, the typical Nigerian would say, who does that? Why would you say anything against your party or against your government? But I feel someone who is genuine, someone who is very clear about what society is supposed to be like, should be able to, whether, it doesn't matter if you're supporting someone, you should be able to say right or wrong. I think for me, that's genuine love. You should be able to say to your husband, what you're doing is not the way it's supposed to be, or this is what you should do. And I think we've come to become a society whereby the woman just keeps quiet. We're known for that. So I think that's one of the reasons she gets attacked as seen as someone who's controversial and things like that. I see it as someone who understands the rights of the people, who understands what should be done, and she has every right to say it. Do you think she's supporting President Buhari's second term um, agitation for 2019? 100%. Yes, she is. You've so seen there's no the pictures. cause for consent? No, there isn't. 100%. Because a lot of, a lot of people have, have so far been saying that she's deliberately staying away because she had promised that if you know, things don't go the way she wanted, she's going to stay away. And she would outrightly come out and say that. I think she is the type of woman that would do that if she wasn't behind it. We have meetings constantly from the unit level to the state level. Just two days ago, we were at the APC Women and Youth meeting in Kebi, where I'm from under Dr. Zainab Atikubagudu. And we were able to also discuss what are we going to do moving forward with the postponement, postponement by INEC. And results of this would be sent back to the villa for Mrs. Bahari to see. Do you understand? So I feel if someone who's not supporting would not be involved in any way. We saw pictures of her and Dora. We saw videos of her and Dora doing door to door and things like that. So if she's not supporting, why would she even be in the country? You are one of the most prominent voices in northern Nigeria, where women are marginalized. Mm. What are you doing in your personal capacity to give women or young girls a more, an opportunity or voice? Well, I can say even just being myself, <laughs> you know, starting out as a photographer in a space where there wasn't any female photographer, was that in itself has been inspiring for many people. And being able to say that I've run for a House of Representatives as the first female in my constituency to do that, I've seen a lot of women and heard from a lot of women that say I'm inspired to get up and do this and I'm inspired to join. So I think for me, it's not just, I would say I'm one of the lucky ones to have been from a family that sees the value of women. You know, most women in my family work. Most women in my family are up and doing, you know. Um, but that's not necessarily the case for most people. But today I have parents reaching out to me to mentor their children. And that never used to be the case. I think most of my mentees today were reached out to me by a relative or a family member to say, okay, I have this young girl, she's interested in this or that. Is there a way you could talk to her? And so I'm, I'm seeing change. I'm seeing it come from even directly um, based on the things that I'm doing and also the general popula population too. So you're mentoring girls across the northern states Yes, I am. I am. It would be interesting to know if you have a number. In terms oh, of people you've gosh. Out I <laughs> if I say from trainings, let's just say trainings, I would probably say I've trained at least 6,000 people. Um, mentoring right now, um, this year I have 15. Um, I think I'll be announcing another 10 in April um, because it's easier for me. I've realized instead of doing things largely, you're able to make an impact mostly one-on-one. -on -one. I've done a lot of mentoring projects where it's a huge, big deal. I mean, a lot, large number of people, and then we try to connect online, but it's, it's quite draining, and I don't see the impact after the, the documentation. So now I'm doing a lot more one-on-one -on -one mentoring and see how they can also. So my deal with you is if I mentor you, you're mentoring 10. Mm -hmm. And I need to see that impact within a certain period of time. So gradually, hopefully, we keep expanding and growing. It wasn't an easy um, ride for you getting a ticket for your party, for instance. What would you say to women that want to get into politics and they keep saying, it is too dirty to get my hands in, or is, the system is too, it's not so pretty for me to get my hands dirty. I think that's the word, yeah. Okay, I, I, the other day I did a poll on my Instagram about um, stereotypes about women in politics. 
And one of the major things was the women are wayward. Um, you must be, you must have had a man. Um, you must be sleeping with someone to get to where you're going. I've never done any of that. But I feel just being a part of the system and holding on to your rights and being able to respect each other in one way or the other. And in times where people overstep, you should be able to teach them that, listen, I'm not one of those. You know, I'm, I'm definitely not one of those. Don't come near me and don't try it. And still be able to continue because it's a learning process. When people get used to doing certain things, they get away with it. So being able to find someone that is different from the norm, you're able to create a change within the system. Um, and I feel also that's also one of the ways of keeping women out by creating this thing. And it's the same thing with young people. Uh, if we say politics is dirty, then that's the reason why we should come on board. We should be able to clean it one way or the other. Uh, saying politics is dirty and staying out of it is ridiculous. We all need to come on board and find a way to fight that dirtiness or else things continue as they are. What do you think would be the, the general um, perspective for observers that uh, let's say even intellectuals that are that or those that call themselves intellectuals or those in the diaspora that feel like the system in Nigeria as it is today, they don't want to be a part of it. Well, I would definitely say they definitely aren't patriots. They are not patriots. I can comfortably sit in my house and say I'm not gonna do anything. To be honest, you're constantly swimming against the tide. But you have to be willing because I have children. I have children and I know the Nigeria I want for them. And I can't say that I'm just going to fold my hands and do nothing. But I do know a lot of people in the diaspora that don't live here, but are willing to support a lot of civic responsibility, support a lot of, create a voice for people that are here based on what they know and how things are being done internationally. And I have to commend many of those that have come back to the country to put in their little, to say, okay, you know what, we're going to find these stories. You're a journalist, Mercy. And I know one or two others that have left the comfort of where they are to come to find stories that create dialogue. Just being able to create that dialogue for people to start talking about it is all we need sometimes, you know. And I know some groups within the diaspora that are also looking at solutions. They're sending in white papers to say this is how things should be done, you know. So the failure would be in our part to not listen. That would be our failure. But it would be a failure on anybody in the diaspora to say, I'm doing a hands-off. I, 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 I can't really deal with Nigeria. Because whether you like it or not, wherever you are, you will still be seen as Nigerian or with Nigerian descent. Someone, that's always how it's tagged. Let's so you can't run away from that. Let's talk about one of your popular um, um, projects. Um, your, your, yeah, your popular pro project, Center for Arts and Creative Talents. Yes. What's the future for that? Uh, how is it? Are you just focusing on politics and abandoning that? Oh, no, 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 no. Okay, so as a creative, I never thought I had a space in politics. But one thing I realized is you can look at the campaigning. Where we, it's always creatives, whether it's the graphic designers or the photographers or the videographers or the painters. There's always something you need those creatives to sell the market, the musicians, you know. And I've realized that, okay, I felt I didn't have a space, which was a very unexposed way of thinking. But now that I'm within the system, I understand it's for everybody. We are the government. The government is us. And we can't keep doing that me against them thing. So as a creative, with my foundation, I want to find ways that we should be able to come up with societal issues using what we already have. Because the people listen. Creative people have a, a voice. They're very popular. And being able to say, I've influenced a whole bunch of people underneath me. Today, um, a musician, who's our biggest musician today in Nigeria? Let's say... Wizkid, Davido, they're getting involved in politics one way or the other now. Dibanj, I remember when he got into agriculture, it was a big deal. People were now like, ah, if Dibanj is doing Gary, then what am I doing? You know, it gets people to think. So having the Center for Art and Creative Talent, apart from mentoring people and coming up, we will definitely and continue to bring up societal issues that affect us in one way or the other, using art and talent to find a way to drive that narrative and to communicate where we want to be and where we want to go. 
using arts and talent to communicate. Aisha Aoghi, thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much, Mercy. Thanks for having me.